Hello everybody, welcome to this new video. In the past I've made some guiding videos where I departed behind the tow plane in an aero tow. Today we are going to have a closer look on the aircraft on the other side of the rope, so the tow plane. We've got here a WT9 Dynamic. This is our club's tow plane and some say it's the best tow plane in the world. Today we're having a closer look on it and I show you the features of our Dynamic. The WT9 Dynamic is produced in Previca in Slovakia and more than 800 pieces have already left the production halls. Today we are going to have a look on all the features of our Dynamic year of manufacture 2007. So it's already 15 year old. Nevertheless, it's really a good tow plane and I'm going to show you why. Under the cowling, the heart of the aircraft, it is a Rotex 912 ULS, which delivers 100 horsepower. This is sufficient to tow our Duo Discus XT on the maximum takeoff weight. The WT9 Dynamic can also be ordered with Rotex 914 engine, which has 115 horsepower, so with the Rotex 915, which delivers even 141 horsepower. And when we tow our duo discos on the max, maximum takeoff weight with 100 horsepower, you can imagine how good the camber rate is with even 141 horsepower. The propeller is a wooden one made by a company Woodcomp of the Czech Republic. It is very quiet, which helps us as we are at the edge of the city. Little noise pollution is getting more and more important and this is another advantage of the dynamic. Light aircraft, powerful, we have a good climb rate, so we produce less noise. On the lower side, we have a fixed gear. You can order the Dynamic also with a retractable gear, which makes the plane even faster. But for our towing purposes and uh, cups purposes, it's fine to have uh, this fixed gear. In the fuselage, we have uh, two tanks. The Total capacity is 100 liters, which is sufficient for good aero towing and also for good traveling with the plane. We are equipped here with the winglets, makes the plane even more beautiful. The flaps are Fowler type. We have uh, four positions in total, so retracted and three extended positions of the flaps. The canopy is forward opening and is a very big screen so the view for the crew is exceptional. We are going to have a look inside the cockpit a little later. At the empennage we have this tow cable retraction winch which is a very good safety feature and which is very vital for guider towing. So the guider gets connected on the plane and in flight after the guider has released the cable. The cable is being retracted and does not stay outside of the aircraft which could cause some uh, dangerous uh, situations for the aircraft while landing. Below the rope we've got this tail guard to protect the aircraft against tail strikes. The empty weight of the aircraft is about 310 kilograms, which leaves a lot of uh, payload left. New versions of the Dynamic are certified for 600 kilograms maximum takeoff weight in the meantime, which means you can carry a lot of luggage and a lot of fuel and you still stay below the maximum takeoff weight. Behind the engine, there is a very important device located. It is the ballistic rescue system. As the Dynamic was designed to be an ultralight, a ballistic rescue system is mandatory. So in case of uh, emergency, the pilot can activate the ballistic rescue system and the rocket is launching and is putting out the parachute on which the aircraft moves safely to the ground. A very good safety feature which is 
presently only mandatory at ultralight aircraft. The activation handle is located here at the center instrument panel. Before the flight, this safety pin has to be removed and then it is armed. So the pilot, in case of emergency, only needs to pull the lever and this activates the ballistic rescue system. The baggage compartment is really big. You've got a lot of space for your luggage. Also inside the baggage compartment, there is the winch, the cable winch located, which is right behind the pilot's seat. This was the introduction about the exterior details of the WT9 Dynamic and now let's have a look inside into the cockpit and have a look on the instrument panel. You enter the aircraft from behind. It's easy. And it's a very comfortable seat here in the cockpit. All of the levers are very good to reach and uh, all of the instruments can be read very clearly and very easily by the pilot. Okay, let's switch on the main switch and the avionics switch. We've got a Dynan EFIS primary flight display where we have the artificial horizon and stuff. We have uh, a mechanical airspeed indicator and a vertical speed indicator, as well as a mechanical altimeter. Here we have uh, the propeller adjustment. We have a radio, a transponder, and we have here the ballistic rescue system. The throttle lever is here. This is the emergency rope release where we chop and cut the cable in case of emergency. To retract the cable, we simply switch on this switch and as soon as the cable is retracted we see the green LED which indicates that the cable is fully retracted. On the lower part of the instrument panel we have the carburetor heating, we have uh, the fuel tank switch, we have uh, the trim lever and we have the flap lever. The flaps are mechanically connected and can easily be adjusted. Here we've got the brake and now let's turn on the parking brake. On the right hand side we have the engine instruments, the cylinder head temperature, oil pressure, oil temperature, the fuel tanks, the fuel tank indicator and manifold pressure as well as a propeller rounds per minute indicator. On the top we have got a power flam which is very important while we are towing guiders. Just the buddies from my home airfield. This is the city of Linz, the biggest town in Austria. <laughs> <laughs> so we are flying along the Danube River. 
no speed indication is in kilometers per, per hour, which is a neat is it, is it usual for ultralight to have the indications in uh, kilometers per hour? Uh, not really, but when it's, uh, as it is used as a tow plane, we use uh, more oh. kilometers an hour. Makes sense, yeah. It feels fast. Yeah, it is fast. Yeah, it is fast. And if you look at the PFD, it looks fast as well because it's kilometers yeah. per hour. <laughs> Okay, we can um, try once uh, a steep climb to yeah. show you the power characteristics. 5,000 rounds per minute propeller speed yeah. is uh, for cruising. And uh, when we are going to do the climb, we switch to a to maximum of 5,700 okay. rounds per minute. The thermos are already active here, as you can see, it's a bit bumpy. Okay, are you ready? Yep. Wow. So it's 120, so the best uh, climb speed for towing heavy gliders. You see, it's really powerful. It is. And this already with uh, only 100 horsepower. The maximum the plane can be equipped with is 140. 141, yes, with oh. the Rotax 915. So we have a cruising speed of 180. Yeah, it's good. Yeah, pretty good. About a hundred knots for cruising speed. Yeah. Pretty exactly a hundred knots. Yeah. Pretty, pretty much similar to the DA20. Plus a hundred knots as well with the DA20. The diamond. Yeah. DA20 is a hundred knots as well. Okay. Yeah. Net of the dynamic is you um, dashing as you get in some long and end on so go fancy. Long end on so möglich, landung eigenes MS lint toast. So this was a short flight with the WT9 Dynamic. I'm wondering which turbulence you are using in your club or on your airfield. Let me know in the comments below. If you want to see more of my videos, I would recommend that you watch this video next.